In this video, we'll learn how to create a basic wellness exam in PetPoint. First, go to Care Medical. You can also come down here. You'll notice a search bar on this page. Ignore it. It has nothing to do with creating exams. I will address it in a later video that discusses how to search for exams. In the meantime, we're going to select which type of record we want to create. In this case, an exam. Click Create New Record. Now we're going to search for an animal. There are multiple ways to do this, and I'll briefly go over the most common ways to search for an animal. First is name. It's fairly self-explanatory. Make sure you click the Active Only button to ensure that you're only searching through animals who are currently active in the program. Animals with common names like Buddy or Momo tend to have a lot of animals that were named that. And so if you search for all, then you'll be wading through a bunch of records of inactive animals. If you're unclear on what an animal's accurate name spelling is, you can click Fuzzy Search. That will bring up any animal name that is similar to what you type. So let's search for Alistair. As you can see, it's brought up a lot of names that begin with AL. Right here we see we have two Alistairs and they're both active, and they're both cats. So a, a good way to identify which one you're looking for is to come over here to location. Location um, for our programs is typically fostered. It does also include adoption centers. But in this circumstance, you can see that the Alistair that you're looking for may have Laura Shirley's name attached to it. So you would select this one like that. You can also search entirely by location in case you don't have the name right here. In addition to various APA adoption centers and locations such as the medical suite, which is the clinic, the overnight, which is the um, headquarters that are main building for the dogs, Parva Ward. Okay, and down here we also have all our dog fosters. And if you select someone's name and click Find, it will actually bring up all the animals that person is currently fostering. And from there, you can select the one that you want. There's dogs. Down here is cats. Just a word about the cats. The program is actually divided its fosters into what type of cats they typically foster. So we have bottle baby cats, regular cats. Down here, we have pregnant and nursing mama cats. And then we also have a small section of fosters who specialize in fostering medical cats. Okay. Another way to search is by microchip ID. Sometimes you'll have nothing but a sticker on a page. You can actually enter the microchip number and it will bring up the animal that it belongs to. You can search among the last 10 entries that you worked on. This is helpful when you're working on a large batch of uh, kittens or puppies. And then finally, we have the two A numbers. Let me explain these real quick. The majority of our animals come from Town Lake Animal Center, TLAC. TLAC gives all its animals a seven-digit identification number, which we call an A number because it begins the letter A. It's very important that we keep these because the animals do not technically belong to us. They belong to TLAC until they're adopted out, and we have to report back to them about the status of the animals that we have. So that's why we keep their numbers. In pet point, it's called a reference number but we commonly call it an A number. There's also the animal number, which is what we call the pet point A number. Anytime an animal is inserted into the pet point program, it automatically assigns them this number down here. This is the pet point A number. See, here's the TLAC A number. Here's the pet point A number. This is important because some of our animals don't come to us from TLAC. Some of them come through our PASS program, which is where individuals from the public surrender their animals or find them and give them to us to put into our program. We also have animals who come from other shelters and clinics, such as Bastrop, Georgetown, Lampasas, San Marcos, etc. And so their ARN number, their A number, will actually be the name of the shelter from which they came. And obviously, if you search with Pass or Wilco or Georgetown, you're going to get every animal who has come from that shelter and is active in our program. So to find a specific animal, you would use this number. For our purposes, we're going to look up my cat, my foster cat named Philippe. Here he is. Isn't he pretty? 
Now, I don't know why PetPoint directs you to the Animal tab. It's a bit confusing. Um, this is a new feature that PetPoint offered in the medical rollout. Now, it includes the Animal tab, which used to only be in the Edit Animal section. But this allows us to uh, make any sort of edits to an animal's profile on the fly without having to move between a sections. Um, it's helpful for, you know, if you're doing work like that, but it's not necessary to the um, uh, creation of medical records except for when you're creating one record for multiple animals, and I'll explain that in another video. In the meantime, we go to Details. And here you're going to enter, what type of exam is this? We don't use pending or scheduled as of right now. We just do completed in history. History is a record that was created by anybody outside the program. So if um, an animal came to us from Bastrop, all of the records of what they did would be a historical record. If an animal is returned to us and the previous owner brings all his vet records, that would be an historical record. For the most part, though, you're going to be using completed. That means it is an an exam completed by APA. Status date and time, that's when the exam took place. It will auto-populate with today's date and time. You can change it if you want, just manually. Providers who actually conducted the exam, so you have various animal shelters. We have the generic APA adoption counselor, a foster in case they gave the animal medication from their own stock or by themselves our doctors, as well as a generic C notes. This is good if there's not uh, one particular provider who meets the criteria. You can just put C notes and then write down here like Dr. Banfield and then a phone number. If it is a different doctor um, and it's not somebody in the AP program, try and find a phone number to include the notes section so that we can contact them if we have any questions about that particular exam. Record subtype, illness or injury, intake, that means it's the first time we're seeing an animal once we get them from the shelter. Med vaccines without exam, this means any sort of medication or vaccine that's given to an animal without them being seen at the clinic. For example, an adoption counselor will frequently um, give their animals preventative heartworm and frontline you know, flea medicine, so that's not something that requires an exam. Other better shelter, phone or email correspondence. If a tag is talking to um, a foster via phone or email or another vet and the animal is not seen in that clinic, then the notes would go down in the notes section and this would be classified as a phone or email correspondence exam. Post-adoption, just what it sounds like, uh, frequently will happen is if we have a dog, for example, who's on heartworm treatment and they get adopted, uh, we may have agreed to continue giving them the last few treatments and so any visit to the clinic would be a post-adoption exam. There's surgery, and then there's wellness. That's basic preventative medications and vaccines. So it's the same as this, except the animal is actually seen in the clinic. When in doubt, just put wellness exam, and then put notes down here. Review date and time. If the vet or technician wants to see them, in you know a couple days, maybe it says on the paper, uh, you know, recheck bandage in two days, or uh, retest in two weeks, or you know, um, follow up visit in three weeks, and you just put the date here. Weight, let's say he's 11 pounds. Let's say he had a fever. You won't typically use these fields, but they're here if you need them. Templates. Sometimes we have routine exams. And rather than write out all that information over and over again, we have specific templates like uh, the bottle baby exam. You're going to hit append so that it'll show up here and you can add any notes. See? These are typical um, diagnostics that every litter of uh, bottle baby kittens goes through when coming into a program. So you can put like uh, nasal discharge, fleas. Down here for diagnostics, you can put, you know, um, tested negative for FELV, and then any sort of like strongid, capstar, anything like that. Uh, 
Okay, and then you just click Save Details and go on to the next screen. Once you hit the Save Details button, you've officially created an exam and an animal's profile. You can make any sort of edits to the date, to the provider, to you know what was done, but um, you cannot delete it unless you have those privileges. If you do need to delete the test entirely, there you go. If you don't have permissions and you need to delete something, please make sure you reach out to an admin who does have those permissions.